Okay. Hey everyone, my name is Peter and hope you're having a good day. This is another video sponsored by Squarespace and I'm happy to announce that I have a co-host for today's video and I haven't given it a name, so maybe you can think of one. Here it is. It's a small slug I found attached to one of my packages out by the door and it it stowed away and got inside and I almost stepped on it, but instead I tried to keep it overnight and I tried to feed it a leaf from one of my plants. And I'm about to show this slug to you underneath this microscope. So if you don't want to see that, look away. Here's our co-host. Aw, hey little slug. It's crawling on my finger. Let me focus. It's crawling up toward us. It's very cute. It didn't eat any of the leaf I gave it, but it did uh, poop a little bit. Look at it go. It's got weird little antenna thingies. Maybe there's some eyeball action in there anywhere, somewhere. It's got like other little antennas uh, for other things, I suppose. Um, I think they just have like little ports or little holes for ears maybe. Or for breathing. There's just holes for, I don't know, breathing, hearing. I'm not sure where all that comes in. The great trek around my finger continues. Look at it go. It's got like little spots and stuff. Very cute. Anyways, uh, Slug, would you like to say anything to the class? Anything at all? Say it now or forever hold your peace. Um, go. Uh, well, today we are going to be drawing on a wood panel some more. My third such video on this topic, topic and I'm just now getting into it. Captain Slow. Maybe I'll name him James May. Now, I will say there is a cool place you can go to make, create, design, and host your own webs websites. It's called Squarespace. And in case you haven't heard of it, I will say it's pretty cool because depending on your business model or what you're trying to do, you can do a lot of different cool things. Mm, like having email campaigns, it automates all of that, and it helps you stand out from everyone else's emails that they're getting in their inbox. It helps create a unique voice for your brand. Plus there are a lot of very useful and cool analytics with the traffic overview, seeing visits, unique visitors, page views, so on and so forth, where they say information is power and Squarespace gives you plenty of it. They don't leave you high and dry, okay? They want to help you. So go to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws to get 10% off your first website or domain. Okay, let's go get started. So at the time of me recording this, it is the beginning of October, I believe October 4th. And basically my feeling at the moment is that I'm looking forward to October because September was a really weird month for me. It was just odd. I did a lot of great things that I enjoyed, but also I had this strange feeling of a little bit of angst, a little bit of being stressed out. And I was stressed out kind of because I wasn't working enough. Okay, I you might have you might be able to notice this just by looking back at how frequently I was uploading during September, which was probably not very frequently. I do have this recurring problem, which I've probably mentioned before, of kind of uh, measuring my own self worth by how productive I am, right? And it's definitely a problem, and it's definitely um, probably a somewhat widespread problem throughout society these days. You know that if you're not doing something, if you're not making things, if you're not making money, if you're not you know making something of your of, of yourself, uh, then you're some sort of failure. And uh, it's definitely not right, but it definitely is something that goes on in my head. 
what happened this month is, uh, first of all, I moved, right? I spent a lot of time doing that. And then basically my ideal month or basically I would love to just be able to look forward in, in time and, you know, look forward to the next few months and just see like a blank slate, just a blank calendar, not a bunch of things that I need to be doing, like not a bunch of plans I've made. I would just ha- love to have a bunch of nothing planned uh, and just be able to think, yeah, all right, cool. I can just buckle down and work on these projects like art and making videos and stuff like that. That would really make me the least stressed, right? Because I'll have all this, yeah, I would just be able to do whatever I need to do every day. But then life happens, right? And I do things like moving and then uh, I have some friends who want to like go hang out and go on like some trips and, you know, like do like some vacation-y type things. And I tell myself like, I should do this, right? What's the point of being so lucky to have a job like this where I can, you know, I don't have to work like nine to five. I don't have to ask for days off. I don't have to, you know, I don't, I don't really have like a boss or anything. What's the point of having that uh, luxury, which I'm very thankful for. What's the point of that? If I don't take the, take, take the, the, the opportunity to go make some memories with my friends, you know, to go on a trip every now and then. So then I say, yes, I, um, I, like I went to the beach, like I mentioned, and then, uh, recently with my cousin, I, I, I posted some pictures. You might see this. I went up to Shinkoteague Island in Virginia because my cousin and I wanted to, uh, watch a rocket launch, uh, cause they on, have Wallops Island near there, which is like a NASA launch facility. And we wanted to go watch them launch one of the, their, and I think it's called Antares rockets. There's a pretty big rocket they launched there to go up and resupply the International Space Station. Uh, so we, we, I mean, I could talk about that trip forever, but anyways, I did that. And then this weekend I was hanging out with some friends too. So, I mean, it's like really good. I love, like, I call it like, like making memories, like just sitting down and working on my art, I feel like isn't really making memories. Uh, but at the same time, the whole time I am like not working, I have like this weird little thing nagging me in the back of my mind. Like you really should be doing stuff. It's, it's weird. It's, I don't know. I'm definitely getting better at it than I used to be. Like sometimes I wouldn't even enjoy myself hanging out with friends, uh, because of that nagging feeling that, oh, I need to go home and, you know, work on <laughs> making another video or drawing or something. So thankfully, uh, I don't know. I'm just looking forward to, I don't have very much stuff for planned for October, I guess. So hopefully here's to, um, some videos. I don't know. Maybe I can make some videos that take a little bit longer to make, or I'm like, I'm not promising that I'll just be pumping them out every day or anything. I am doing another drawing on a wood panel here, which you can see. I did, didn't include every step like I have before. Like I did it once again, I did four coats of polyurethane. And then after I drew on it with, uh, with, uh, the, the Posca paint pens, I coated it with the matte golden matte varnish to uh, seal it. I think it's like, what's that word? Not it's a uh, archival quality. And even on the can, it says it's removable for conservation purposes. I don't really know what that means, but I guess Art conservationists sometimes remove the varnish on top or something to maybe repair or uh, maintain the art underneath if it's like cracking or something. I don't know. I don't know. They probably have special chemicals for removing varnishes, but I, I don't. I don't. I personally don't plan on doing that. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how that would work. I guess I have. There's probably like videos on YouTube of people that do that. They uh, repair old paintings and stuff like that. It's, I'm sure it's super fascinating, and. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with how this one worked. It's uh, definitely a different type of one of my drawings. Like I, for a long time, I've been making these weird little d- diagrams, right? Either it's like some blobby thing, some like weird alien organism or like a mechanical thing like this. And then I draw a bunch of lines and words around it. And it's just some strange diagram. Sometimes I write actual words. Sometimes I write made up words. Sometimes I write a totally made up uh, language or alphabet. Uh, and this word, I, and this time I kind of chose words to put around it that were related to things 
related to like genetics, uh, et cetera. For some reason, that's just the, the kind of the theme I went with to find words. I kind of looked up random Wikipedia articles related to genetics and, uh, I don't know. I didn't even know what, I, I didn't understand the articles I was reading, but they, there are a lot of cool words, long words that I was kind of mixing and matching together. Some of the words are real, some of them aren't, and that's all right. The point is that I enjoy that I don't understand them. It kind of a, accomplishes the same purpose as writing a totally made up language. If they are even a language I do know, but the words I don't know. Right. Anyways. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I do want to say I like, I had a great time, uh, when I went to the, the, I went to like, I, so, so it's so common to go to Airbnbs these days, right? The Airbnb app, you know, you can go to Airbnb, but I went to like an actual bed and breakfast, uh, in Shinkotig. And that's maybe the first time I've ever done that. Like each room was like different. It's like a little inn, right? And then the, uh, this nice lady and her husband ran the place and they're just, it was just so cute and like cozy and adorable. Unfortunately, the rocket launch got scrubbed because it was storming that night. And so, uh, we were considering staying, you know, another two days for when they had rescheduled it, but it's a good thing we didn't because that one also got scrubbed and that one only got scrubbed two and a half minutes before the launch at T minus two minutes 40 because some like weird part broke or something. So I don't know when they actually ended up launching the rocket, but it's good that we didn't stay another two days. Uh, I probably would have gotten gradually more stressed out <laughs> from being away from home or whatever. I really, I really am just kind of like a homebody. I just like being at home. That's where I'm most comfortable. I guess I'm just not a good traveler. I mean, I think I am a pretty good traveler and I enjoy it, but I don't know. I just like being at home and there, Shinko Teague is famous because it's got all these wild ponies back in maybe like the 40s or 50s. Someone wrote these, I think maybe like children's or young adult books called, uh, I think it's called Misty of Shinko Teague. It's about these ponies, right? And there's these novels. Some people have read them. Some people have heard of them. Uh, but I don't know if the books got famous because the horses are famous or the other way around. But uh, we went on, since we didn't get to go watch the rocket launch, we took this little um, cruise one afternoon, not a cruise, but like a boat, a boat tour. It sounds more dramatic than it really was. It's really just like some really comfy seats on a pontoon boat. And the guide took us around and there were, it was nice because like, it's like late in the afternoon. It was like so picturesque and there were dolphins. We were, the dolphins were accompanying us part of the way. Like that was very, I was like, wow, like they're just like swimming along with us or we're swimming along with them. Maybe I don't know which way it was. And then our tour guide was telling us about uh, the rocket launches, and we hadn't told him that we had come for the rocket launch, which had, which had already been scrubbed two days in advance or whatever, because I guess the forecast predicted that it would be a bad day for such things. And he was just going on and on about how cool it was to watch the rocket launches, he said, especially at night, and it was gonna be a night rocket launch he's like oh yeah it lights up the whole sky he's like daytime rocket launches are okay but nighttime rocket launches are oh they're just a whole other thing and he was just saying how wonderful they were over and over again and we were just like oh you know we were already you know like oh why do we have to miss it you know <laughs> and then we went around to this one part and there were just like these wild horses standing there and uh just kind of munching and there were like some little foals and stuff little baby horses and it was cute it was really cool and apparently what happens is once a year this is the biggest thing that ever happens in this town uh besides the rocket i think it's even more bigger it's bigger deal than the rocket launches which blows my mind is that a bunch of cowboys go out to this island where the where the horses live they ride around on their horses the cow, like actual cowboys on horses and they round up like 180 of these wild horses and they scare them across this one section where it's like shallower or they, they, they make the horses swim across to the mainland or I guess Shinko take its own island. So from one island to another island, they make the wild horses swim across and they corral them into this area. And, and that, then I think they like auction off all the foals that were born that year. 
And about half of them, I guess, are, they sell all the foals, but only half of the foals are taken somewhere else. And then half the foals, even though they're sold, they go back to the island to live a, a semi-wild life. I think even though they're wild, they they put like brands on their hips showing like what year they were born. And maybe they do some things like giving them shots. I don't know, but they mostly just live out there uh, just doing their thing, right? But yeah, each horse out there has pretty much been bought by someone, but it just stays out there. And our our tour guide was like, yeah, that one was sold for a record of $23,000. And that one right there held, held the record before at $20,000. And I don't know, it's just crazy to me. You know, they I guess they're pretty much sponsoring a horse. And I think the proceeds go to like, if I remember correctly, go to like the, the fire department or something. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's pretty crazy though. It's cool to see the horses and the dolphins and the sunset from the boat and everything. And the all the the bed and breakfast was just so cute because we got to go. It was like because it, it was like an English lady that was running it, and so she she did like tea time one afternoon, and we went and there were like little triangle sandwiches and scones with, you know, like tea and everything. It was just it was just nice. And we go walk around, and I I found my first geocache because I download the geocache app a while ago because I thought it'd be cool to find geocaches while I'm riding my bike around to kind of give me a goal for like something to actually do while riding my bike instead of just riding around aimlessly for exercise right but then I found out I don't actually like taking out my phone while I'm riding my bike because it's just you know like it's kind of scary you might drop it or I don't know I just don't like taking it out it's kind of a pain so I found my first geocache there in Virgin on the Virginia coastline and it it was like a little a little park near the bed and breakfast. And it took us three days, all three days. On the third day, we finally found it. <laughs> it's just, I guess if you've never found one before, you don't really know what you're looking for, right? But I finally found it, and it felt good. So now my geocache account says one total finds, and uh, it feels good. I saw, you can like see the messages other people leave with the app. And I saw one person's account saying that they had found 20,000 geocaches, which, frankly, that blew me away. It was crazy. <sighs> Anyways, I don't know what else to say. There's been some other stuff happening, I'm sure. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's been a good time, though. It's like a weird mixture of, like, having a good time, hanging out with some friends, you know, making memories, like I said, which I, I just trying to focus on being okay with having a good time and relaxing and then, you know, not beating myself up for not working. Cause I, I feel like I am a, a little bit of a workaholic, but I need to get away from that. I, mean, I don't know. It does feel good to work. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, yeah. Next, I think I'm going to do a bigger panel. I bought, I already have been to, I went to Jerry's and I bought a bigger panel. This one, I think is like maybe 20 inches on its largest side. I don't want to want to say and be wrong. Maybe 16 by 20. I'll put it in the, in the, in the description, the, the size of it. And, um, but I went and bought a much bigger panel, maybe well, I forgot already what the much bigger one is, but you'll see it in the next video when I draw on a wood panel. I think next I'll probably do some more pen reviews because I've got some pens piling up to review. Uh, but then I'll get back to this wood panel. In fact, I think maybe the wood panel, if since it's bigger, maybe it'd be good to maybe like chop it up into several different videos, like part one, part two, you know, since it'll probably take me. Most of my drawings just take me one or two days since I'm always, I feel this pressure to, you know, like keep pumping out videos. So maybe I won't if it takes me like a week or two to draw it since it's so big, maybe I should break it up. I don't know. Or maybe I should just work on it every now and then and then make a big video at the end. Anyways, hope you're all doing all right. Happy October, everyone. And uh, yeah, see you later. Take care, okay? All right. All right. Goodbye.